I'd like to introduce to you Dr. George Brogan Smith, uh, also known as the Healthy Bear. Uh, Dr. George Brogan Smith is actually a GP from here in Melbourne, not that far up the road either, I believe. Might have been just a nice and healthy walk for you to come down from here. Kind of, yes. Kind of. Um, George is quite passionate about social media and how we can actually use technology within our practices to improve um, patient health care and also uh, sharing all of this information with GPs. I'm not going to spend too much introducing George because I think he's got a lot of valuable information that he needs to, to let us know about. So can I introduce Dr. George Paul Smith? Cool. Well, thank you for having me. I'm assuming that you can, guys can hear me at the back. That's all good. Who am I talking to? Is, it, is this primarily practice managers or, yes, lots of nodding. Any doctors in the room? There's half a hand. You're halfway through medical school. Congratulations. Um, that's awesome. Doctors usually really struggle with this stuff, so I'm always happy to um, sure and ensure that our future doctors are learning about this sort of stuff. And I talk to a lot of doctors about this. So why the hell am I here? Well, bug it if I know. Brett was really nice and he invited me to come and talk, um, but this is an area that I'm particularly passionate about. Um, my bio, I did my medical degree in Queensland and I was actually going to be a psychiatrist and then my boss sat me down and said you're more bloody interested in business than you are in psychiatry. Become a GP and run a business. And I thought that's a really good idea so I did it. I went to Byron Bay, did my GP training there and oh, it's lovely, it's beautiful, all that sort of stuff but I felt like a retiree and I needed a change so I moved to Melbourne. There's a problem as a GP when you move to a new town because you usually have patients that will not fly from Byron Bay to Melbourne. We'll talk about that in a moment, but so I had no damn patients and I was like, what the frickin' hell am I gonna do? Now, I am a certified um, web developer. I'm certified in social media. I'm, I like to think that I'm a, a part-time Google whisperer. Right, so I thought, well, I kind of know this, so what can I do to harness a group of people that I like looking after? My areas of specialty are gay men's health, HIV, um, men's health, weight loss for guys. You're not hearing pap smear, right? <laughs> Don't come to me for a pap smear, because, no, nah, I'm not your guy. <laughs> Um, so I thought, well, how the hell do I get those people to come and see me? And I thought, well, I will meet them. I will meet them where they're at. So at the time, I was a slightly hefty fellow. I was a, a delicate 120 kilos, hairy, bearded. Um, in the gay term, I am what is called a bear. I'm not quite sure what I am now. I think I'm an otter. Anyway, a bear. <laughs> Fat hairy, middle-aged men. They were my target market because guess what? They hate doctors with a passion. So I decided I was going to adopt them. I was going to become the healthy bear. So what I did was I created a blog called thehealthybear.com and I created an interface between me, the medical profession and bears. And that has worked a miracle. I filled up my books very, very rapidly. Within two months, you couldn't get an appointment to see me, which pissed off some of the people that I worked with, but <laughs> say lovey. <laughs> um, and here's the thing, right? People say to me, oh, but that wouldn't work for me. It does work for people, and I've done it multiple times. I've done it with bears. I've done it with gay men's health. I've done it with men's health. I've done it with rapid HIV testing. I've created all of these businesses from scratch, from social media, and created a group of people that will happily follow me around. Practice managers, you're not gonna to like to hear what I say about this, but I teach this to medical students, and I teach this to GP registrars. And the reason I teach this to GP registrars is because it gives them job security. <coughs> because if you have a group of people that love you, they will follow you no matter where you go. I have people fly to me from Perth to see me for a rapid HIV test probably worthwhile knowing. So what I would like to teach you today is how you can do what I do on a budget 
and fill your books up with passionate people, people that will give you the Google reviews that you so rightly deserve, people who will scream and be your bastions on the street. People who will go, you've got to go and see Dr. Such and Such because they were just so damn nice and they were the only people that understood what I was going through. And it's, it's not difficult to do. It's actually really, really easy. So my interests are talking. I love talking. You can't shut me up. So that's me talking at um, oh, some GP convention a few years back or something. I'd, Great t-shirt, I wear them a lot. I make a lot of videos and I love video. Video is my passion. You'll notice that I'm recording this. Um, wonder why? We'll talk about that in a moment. But video is my passion and I will put it to you now that you need to get into video. I can get you a listing on Google in 30 minutes or less, number one, two, three or four, depending on the keyword, in half an hour. I can get you listed in the front page of Google in half an hour if you follow what I do. And it's not that hard. I also make websites. I make a lot of websites. Every time I come up with a new idea, every time I get bored, every time I have a whim, I tend to make a new website. I own a lot of freaking domains. <laughs> They're not expensive. They're like $9.95 a year. Buy domains because I tell you now, once you own them, they're yours for life. Buy them before somebody else does. If you have a name, buy your name. Because somebody else will if you don't. You should own your own name and not just the .com. You should own the .net, the .org, the .info if you're really anal retentive, .com.au, but you need an ABN to own a .com.au, but you're all practice managers, you can work it out. Um, it's not hard, but you should absolutely own your name. You should absolutely own a website that's connected to your name. Um, why should you care? What do people do when they're waiting to see their doctor? What does the average punter do? They're on their phone, what else are they doing? They're practicing. They sit there and they rehearse. They rehearse their symptoms. So if you go and see a doctor and they don't let them practice their speech, then the patient gets really, really pissed off. And the research says that the patient will keep on going back to the start until they get to tell their story. So it's really, really important. Teacher doctors, shut the hell up. For the first 90 seconds of a consult, shut up. Just let the person tell their story. They've been practicing for half an hour, so you may as well let them say it. That's one thing, but the other thing is that they are Googling your doctor's name. Absolutely Googling your doctor's name. That's really important. For the people who are employers in the room, you should probably Google people's names as well. That's a really good idea. I employed a writer a few years back he was a nice guy, I went to medical school with him. I thought, sure, if you want to write an article for my blog, why the hell not? It means one less article that I have to write. So he wrote me a lovely article and I was really excited. I said to him, dude, this is fantastic. Look, you're number one on Google for blah, blah, blah. And he goes, good, that's got to be better than the other ones that I'm listed in Google for. And I went, hmm. <laughs> I'd better check this. Went and checked his name. Oh, wonderful. He was a registered pedophile. <laughs> fan freak -tastic. So I removed him and disconnected my name at the time, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, best to Google people's names before you employ them, people. It's a really great idea. Google is indispensable. And if you happen to have any registered sex, off sex offenders that are working for you, I'm happy to help you get rid of those listings. Um, or person, um, <laughs> in all legal possible means. But people aren't reading your magazines anymore. Give them free Wi-Fi. If you're really clever, you give them free Wi-Fi and just keep an eye on what websites are popping up more often. But first, a selfie. Everybody comes and they say, oh, you know, I was, the, the, the thing I was talked about was, you need to talk about technology. You really need to talk about technology and it's like, Okay, sure. The, um, 
Every year in Queensland they used to have this telethon for the children's hospital and they would raise ten million dollars and they would buy an ultrasound machine that would diagnose a retinoblastoma in the back of one child's eye every ten years. What a waste of money because I would work on a ward that didn't have scales, that I could measure the weight of people with heart failure and that used to always really, really annoy me. I can talk about all of the exciting technology until the cows come home, but what I will put to you is that the best technology that you need to harness today is the iPhone. In 2007 the iPhone was introduced and it changed the way people interact with the world. Absolutely. It's got a camera in there and it's got a web browser in there and it's got a GPS service in there. And with those three things you can run an amazing, an amazing Google rocking social media campaign. It's really, really easy if you have an iPhone. I am religious, I am a member of the cult of Apple and I updated my phone only what, two or three weeks ago because I, up, I update every year because I'm that kind of idiot. Um, <laughs> but it's just the way that I am and everything I do, I do on my iPhone. Some things I will do on my computer but most everything in my world I can run from my phone and I really, really recommend that. As I said, people don't particularly care about your MRI machine, they really don't. What they do care about is how long it takes to get through to reception when the phone rings. They care about how people answer the phone. They care about how long they have to wait to see the doctor. They care about that greatly and they talk about it. I tell young medical students today, if you want to be remarkable as a doctor, run on time. Amazing. It's not that hard people to run on time but you have to train your patients. To do that you have to train your patients. Happy to talk about that at a future engagement if you wish. Um, but it's all about how people make you feel and the reason we care about these feelings is because people talk. People talk a lot and on social media talk travels. Last week, is anybody here from the Iron Ear Hospital? Excellent. Is anybody's best friend work for the Iron Ear Hospital? <laughs> anyway, an unknown hospital in Melbourne sent me a letter last week <laughs> and it basic, basically one of my patients had gone to there to get the wax sucked out of their ear and they, they just presented to the emergency department randomly because they apparently had nothing better to do. So Dr. Carelot sent me a letter explaining that an emergency department was for emergencies, that this person had no medical problems and that would I please defer <coughs> referring these patients to his very important centre of excellence because he had no medical issues and no reason to be there. I was super thrilled because I hadn't sent that patient so I snapped a photo and I put it up on Facebook in a Facebook group that's just for doctors, an important garden of safety. Um, and the GPs went off. They were livid. Somebody else was also livid because within 10 minutes I got a phone call <laughs> from the director of the emergency services at that unknown hospital. And um, she was genuinely concerned that one, that I'd received a letter that was so patronising and so damn rude. And then she goes, oh, and I heard that you might have published the letter on Facebook. Is that true? And I went, yes, yes, I did publish it on Facebook because you, but you're such a nice and reasonable person, I'll remove it. And I did. But good news travels fast, bad news travels faster. And when it comes to social media, it's very, very important that you know what's going on with your name. Um, so you have to meet your market where they're at and this is where they are at. They're sitting on their phones in your waiting room pissed off because they've just had to wait 45 minutes to talk to a doctor who was grumpy to them. Facebook is it's the crack of the internet today. Facebook is where it's at. Facebook is where people are first to log into the world. It's one of the world's biggest, biggest websites next to Google, next to YouTube. This is where people are. Who has a Facebook account? Okay, hold your hands up, keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Who has a practice Facebook page? Who looks at it on a regular basis? <coughs> this is very, very important because people leave reviews for your Facebook page. Thank you, you can put them down, otherwise you'll start complaining. And <laughs> 
and everyone looks like they've got polio and it's never good. Um, but this is important. Facebook is where it's at. And there are th the thing about Facebook is it's hyper-social, hyper-viral. You can have groups. You can do all sorts of wonderful things with Facebook. And most importantly, you can control your social media from Facebook very, very easily. And you can quickly get an idea about what's happening in your world with Facebook as well. I know doctors in the United States who run their practice just from Facebook. Sole doctors who only work a few days a week and what they do is they get onto Facebook and say, hey, I'm coming to work today. Who wants an appointment? Fill up their books in 10 minutes and then that's it, you missed out. Um, probably not good for people who look after people bleeding out from a, you know, an axe, axe wound to the neck, but if you're a, a touchy-feely, you know, I'm worried about your chakras kind of doctor, then you can do extremely well out of Facebook. But I, the other thing about Facebook is that it's what's called a Google trusted site. There are seven places in the world that Google trusts. Facebook is one of them. Twitter is another, Pinterest, there's a few other places in there. Why do we care about Google trusted sites? Because the minute you put something up on Facebook, Google wants to see what you put up. So, if you happen to run a blog for a website for a medical center, it's probably smart to let Facebook know that you put something up there because it will get spidered and indexed in Google within minutes, literally minutes. I'm able to get stuff listed on Google within 10 to 15 minutes on the front page of Google if it's newsworthy enough. And I'll even teach you how to newsjack as well, because it's worthwhile. And it's a good skill to have, particularly in private, um, private healthcare. So Facebook, you've got to look after Facebook and I'll tell you how to do that. Twitter, 140 characters at a time is changing the world. Twitter's very, very important. Um, for two reasons. One, I use Twitter to tell people what I'm doing and what I'm talking about, but I also use Twitter for news collection as well. I was in Paris four, three weeks ago, and suddenly there were ambulances going everywhere, and there were a lot of ambulances, and I was in a fairly respectable area of Paris, and I was going, what the hell is going on? Quickly got onto Twitter, looking up the hashtag Paris, and then I'd found out that there'd been riots in Paris, two blocks away from where I was. Um, a police officer had been, had a Molotov cocktail thrown on him, and horrible, horrible. <laughs> But Twitter is where people are going. When there was uproar happening in, in Turkey and places like that, Twitter is one of the first places you can go to. When the, remember there was an earthquake in Melbourne a few years back? That was where I found out that the earthquake happened. My whole house shook in Clifton Hill. And I was like, that was kind of weird. Quickly get onto Twitter, earthquake, Bing, 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 bing. There was a huge pulse of people talking about it. So Twitter's very, very important. Twitter is also a place where you can engage your patients, but you can also follow and track trends that's happening within your patient groups. Um, YouTube is my passionate, passionate area. I think I have about seven different YouTube channels for all sorts of different sorts of things. But YouTube to me makes a massive difference to my life. It makes my work so much easier. It reduces litigation. It makes my patients happier. And with an iPhone, YouTube is at, it's in your pocket. It's absolutely in your pocket. So one thing that I like to do, and this, if you want to have your best friends forever, you have your iPhone and it's their birthday. When I'm on the train each morning, I quickly go, Hi, insert name here. Just wanted to take the time to wish you an absolutely fantastic birthday. I hope you're having an amazing day and it's filled with lots of fun, friends and fantastic food. Have a great birthday. It's the same script every time. Everyone gets the exact same script and they piss their pants over it. They love it because everyone else goes, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday video. And it stands out. It really, really stands out. When I have patients who are worried about test results, and I only work three days a week, um, willing to work more, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> um, 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 no, but seriously, if I have patients who are worried about stuff, I'll just make a video. 
and they can watch it again and again and again until they understand it. If you're giving people difficult diagnoses, video is the best way to do it and it will save your butt as well because if it ever goes to court you can say well this is the video I gave them. If you do a lot of procedures you should probably make a video about the procedure that includes the consent. That's worthwhile. If you do a lot of implanons this is a great way to go. This will save your butt. When somebody says I didn't see the implanon go in you can show in the video well here's what we did in the procedure and it's absolutely worthwhile. Video is also a Google trusted site and you can put lots and lots of links into descriptions for videos. Hint, hint. Because that becomes really, really helpful. The other thing is that when people aren't on Facebook, when they're not on Twitter, and when they're not watching YouTube videos, they're usually looking for information. That's why pe people love the internet, because they're looking for information. So Yahoo Answers is one of the sites that I loiter around. In America, it's very expensive to see a doctor. Very expensive to see a doctor. So people have to make a choice. Am I sick enough to pay the money to go and see a doctor? I'm not sure, so what I'm going to do is I will go to Yahoo Answers and ask them and see what they think. So I've answered all sorts of questions. A lot of young men seem to be very worried about appendage size there. You can ignore those or make a video and just send the same video every time. And I often will go, there was one question about like if you had, if you had prostate cancer would you allow a doctor to hack off your balls? was one of the questions that I answered. Now this is a really important question. Why is it important? Because nobody will ever ask their doctor that. They will never ever ask their doctors that. But they're thinking it. So it's almost like you have ESP. You can go to your patients and say, are you worried that you may have to get your testicles removed? I know a lot of people are very very worried about that. And let's talk about it. And the patient will think you are Mystic Meg. <laughs> They will think you're freaking amazing because you read their mind and this is how you do it. If we have a quick look here, what questions have they got? Um, blah, 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 blah. I'm cursed, everyone can hear what I'm thinking. Well that's somebody with schizophrenia, right? That's, well no it is, it's somebody with schizophrenia and it's not going to be easy to interact with them. What is the best treatment for strep throat? What are the chances that some of the doctors in your practices could sit on the phone for three minutes and answer the question what the best treatment is for strep throat, what is strep throat and why do we care about it? It's really easy, you know. Strep throat is remarkably, strep throat is remarkably common. It's caused by a bug called streptococcus and it grows inside the throat. Um, we care about this because we know that it's also associated with kidney infections and problems down the track. So for that reason, our doctors here would love to do a quick swab of your throat and just make sure that everything's okay. If they do find anything, we'll give you an antibiotic and that's called amoxicillin and it works great with 99% of people. That's how easy it is, right? You make a video, you put it up there and you host the video on your website, bada boom, bada bing, everybody loves you. And then they're going to start travelling on trams and buses and planes to get to see you because you were the only person that bothered to answer their question in a nice, caring, polite, loving way. Yahoo Answers is important and it will be a fodder of information for you guys. Google Reviews. Oh, I hate Google Reviews and I love them. I love Google Reviews because at times when people give me bad service I'm a passive aggressive asshole. Um, and if people really annoy me, I'm first on TripAdvisor to let people know about it. Um, but at, you, Google reviews for doctors is a double-edged sword. So currently the, the AMA is saying to people that we can't solicit, doctors cannot solicit reviews online. Practices, I don't know, doesn't sound like they're a doctor though, but you could solicit reviews. But here's the problem, do not Sign up for Google reviews if you've just sacked somebody who hates your guts. Do not sign up for Google reviews if you employ assholes. And I say that with all sincerity because people will call you on it very, very fast. And as long as people are not lit saying litigious things, Google will keep them up there. 
and they, people have to break the law before Google will automatically remove them. And then the next step is that you actually have to get legal advice to get stuff removed. So before you sign up to Google reviews, make sure that your service to your customers is really, really good. Really, really good. Otherwise you'll hear about it really, really fast. There's ways of getting rid of it, as I said, if it's litigious or nasty, then it will get removed. Um, or legal advice, or you just bury them. The trick is just get lots and lots and lots and lots of people to give you positive reviews and just push them down. That's really the, the major way, and I can talk to you about ways of doing that if you wish. So they're the main technologies that I love. And here's the thing that when you bring them all together, they work synergistically in a way that you can rank extremely high in Google. So the, my primary goal is to always rank high in Google. So when people type in my name, they find me. When people type in um, gay friendly GP, here I am, you can't avoid me. Um, but what about you guys? The, the things that you want to rank for, GP, Clifton Hill, that's a kind of a boring kind of a, a thing to want to rank for. It's worth ranking for, but there are probably things you could rank for better. And if you've got practice doctors that are passionate about things, now's the time to start finding out about their passions. So I was going to just explain to you how I do a, a marketing makeover. Would that be okay? Would, would that be all right? This is what I do for punters. This is, um, this is what I've trained in America for and I quite like it. So my big thing is about finding passionate people, people who are really, really, really into what I'm into. So GP and Clifton Hill, is that a passionate search? Is this person really burning to see their doctor? No. They're probably looking for a certificate to get out of work or something like that. They're just looking for doctor someone to give them something, right? So that's not a very passionate search. Gay friendly GP Melbourne. That's a getting a little bit more passionate. And if I tell you, if you want to, if you want clients that are going to love you forever, treat your gay clients well, because I'll tell you now, there's a lot of people who treat them like crap. So if you want good patients who talk about you, treat your gay patients well. Oh, oh, that's me. <laughs> How did I do that? Well, I'll show you. But it's not that freaking hard, people. But I worked for 18 months to make sure that I'm there. And it's not one, two, and half of the page. So there's actually a couple of listings below that, but I actually have half of the listings of that page are all on web properties that I own, right? So that's the power of being really, really good at this. Very passionate people. These are the people who f fly to see me. I've had one person fly from Malaysia to see me for a rapid HIV test in Melbourne CBD. This is somebody who's sitting on the edge of their seat and they desperately want to talk to you. And these are the people I target. These are the people I target. Um, when rapid HIV testing became available in Melbourne, I was super excited and I was the first on the bandwagon to get it going. So I set up a website and this brings me approximately Around about 25 new patients a week, that website. The website took an afternoon to make and it cost me five bucks. No, sorry, I lied, 15 bucks. Because I had to buy a domain as well and the hosting was five bucks. $15, every new patient that hits my door makes the practice $50. So that's not a bad return on investment. So that's not a bad return on investment. So it's about finding passionate people. The trick is to create the garden that attracts the butterflies. So if you have people in your practice that love polycystic ovarian disease, this is a topic that you want to get your people talking about and blogging about because it's a, it's a chronic problem. It's a very annoying problem. And if you have doctors who are blogging about that, people will travel across town to talk to these people. And the first patient visit is always the riskiest 
but the tenth patient visit is usually the safest because you know that they are already a cheering fan and they will bring their friends and this is how you do it. <laughs> ah, you're showing your ages, you're showing your ages. What is it about a country practice? Why did people like this show? Why did they like this show? Can you think why? A sense of community. Pardon? It's a very good sense of community. A sense of community, right? That's what was amazing about Wandon Valley, was that everybody knew everybody, and it was a wonderful, caring environment. Everybody knew Molly. Who cried when Molly died? <laughs> it was like, oh, oh, it was horrible. When she fell off the ladder when she was pregnant. That was horrible. Um, would you like a practice that's like that practice? You can do it. Even smack bang in the middle of Melbourne CBD on Burke Street, I have that practice. I have that practice. None of the other doctors have that. In that work beside me, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, really, I'm a little bit horrible like this, but I came into a practice, I'm employed by the practice, but I treat it like it's my own business. So all of the punters that come to see me have come through my own advertising. It's got nothing to do with the, the actual practice. They come to see me. So my patients treat me like Terence. And they are loyal. And they bring, bring friends. And people look at me sideways. Is why are your books full and mine are empty? It's like, well, because of this. This is what I do. And the way you do that is by creating a community. And you can do that in the virtual world. And that's what I've done. So, how do you create this community? First thing first, set it up right. <laughs> set it up right! And the way to do that is to plan. First decide what the hell you, what community do you want to serve? And then how can I best serve that community? And this is how I work, is that like I decided that I was going to look after disenfranchised medical refugees, fat, hairy, gay men. How can I best serve them? And what I did was I started creating resources for them. I started making videos for them. I started explaining medical stuff that people didn't have time to explain to them. And I popped it all onto a website, thehealthybear.com. You can check it out. It's, it's up there, but the trick is to get blogging, and I think blogging is the key for this. So every, every passion should have its own devoted website, and I think that if you've got a practice full of doctors that have particular interests, you should encourage them to start thinking about blogging about stuff. Stuff that interests them because it pays off in the big time big, big ways. And if you think, I don't know what the hell to write about, get on the news. Every day there's medical news that pops up all of the time. I saw, well you guys, you tell me, how many people came to you for a skin check after that footballer was diagnosed with melanoma? Yeah. It spiked, right? What do you think I did? I talked about melanoma. I talked about how it's really important to get a skin check and the great person, I just happened to do them. You should come and see me. We as a practice do skin checks. Why not book in today? Here's the number. These are the sort of things and it's anything that's in the news, it's time to look for it. If there's nothing in the news that day, go to Yahoo Answers. If there's nothing in Yahoo Answers that sparks your fire, Cura is another place where people ask experts questions and then go to Facebook and then go to Twitter and see what people are talking about there. It only takes half an hour. So this was a screen cap from the news yesterday. Um, diet of chicken, coke and bread left Perth teen with permanent eye damage. That's, you could talk about a healthy diet. That's how easy it is. It's really important that you have two serves of fruit each day and five serves of vegetables. If you'd like to learn more about how to have a healthy diet and how it can infect you, why not book in for a health check? Um, if you're over the age of 65, we can do this and create you a special health, uh, what do they call it? 
healthcare plan. I don't do them. <laughs> I don't do. I honestly don't do them because my patients are too healthy. Um, um, One-eyed matador gorged in eye socket. Mm, mm, that one might be a little bit more tricky. Um, <laughs> head jumping man injured in cans. You can talk about how to deal with bumps, scratches, and whether or not you should be getting a uh, tetanus shot. Everybody should get a tetanus shot every 10 years up to the age of 50. Easy to talk about. Um, record numbers of Australians registered to donate their organs. Why is that one important at the moment? That one's important at the moment because one, we need organs, but the other thing is that there is currently a meme going around that is saying that people are able to feel pain when their organs are harvested. You may have seen it on Facebook, but it's currently going around at the moment, but people are saying that the organs are taken without consent and that the organs are taken while the person is alive, which is true, the person is alive, but they're saying that there's no pain medicines given to the person. Um, so you could potentially create a video that explains loving and caringly how organ donations work and how that the person is no longer able to feel pain and stuff like that. But that's that one of the reasons that that's in the news is because of that Facebook meme and when you start looking for these things and you get it on your radar you're like ah I could easily talk about that and that's it you just have to talk about stuff UQ launches 7 million research center the, the patient mills continue um, I would hate to work at a university at the moment because everything goes on a patent you can't discover anything exciting so what I would recommend is that when you see stuff that you find entertaining, interesting, or that you think your patients would find interesting, get your video out, get your camera out, get your phone out, and just start talking about it. The average punter's attention span is no longer than about three minutes, which is good for you because then you just have to talk for three minutes. And it's really easy to talk for three minutes. I can, well, I've done a lot of it. I've done a lot of it, but it's not hard. And people are happy. If somebody's passionate about something, they will talk about it. And it's important that people need to know about this. Um, every year there is a large leather festival in Chicago called International Mr. Leather. Um, at the end of this year, they had a meningitis outbreak. Here I was. Boop on my phone talking about how you should get the meningococcal, um, the meningococcal vaccine. When I visit America, because I, do, I, I don't just target Australia by the way, I target the world, um, but in America I'm actually treated like a rock star. It's weird. <laughs> it's absolutely weird, but because I'm the only doctor that talks about stuff that other people don't talk about. Whatever you do, don't Google search butt plug safety. <laughs> I'm the only guy. I am the only guy. And I speak in America about this stuff. I've been invited overseas to talk about this stuff because I'm the only dude in the world willing to put them on the line and say, here's how to do things safely. Here's how to enjoy your life and not kill yourself. But that you don't have to be that controversial. You could just talk about how walking for 30 minutes every day will improve your health dramatically. You don't have to go all the way to some select shops throughout the world <laughs> that happen to have affiliate programs that pay very well. Um, bum, bum. Encourage people to share it as well at the end of every video. If you found this video helpful, oh, please share it. You never know, you might save somebody's life. I often say that, particularly if it's like first aid or something like that, how to look after somebody if they've passed out, how to look after somebody if they've had an epileptic fit. People still have really bad information in there. Don't underestimate the stupidity of people. Um, I was in Berlin three weeks ago, before Paris, and somebody had a seizure. Somebody had a seizure in front of me and I, I just went, Okay, I'm on doctor now, so I'm looking after this person and people were wanting to shove wallets in his mouth, somebody wanted to shove keys in his mouth, somebody wanted to give him sprays of adrenaline under his tongue, and I was like, leave him alone. I promise you I'm a doctor, I'll look after him. But that night, made a quick video, shared it with the group of people who I would happen to be out with at the time, and there, I've helped save somebody's life potentially in the future. And that's what you can do with a good quality video. If it's good information that's interesting, people will share it. 
um, and it gives you a reputation and that's what this game is all about it's about creating your reputation as being a good person who shares good information who's not answers.com do you, you're aware of Answers.com? Dun, dun, dun. Answers.com is this crappy clickbait website and it, all of the time on Facebook in your feed you'll see this. Oh, you couldn't believe she did five things with sugar and the next thing you know... And you get to this website that's got video ads down both sides and you have to click and click and click and click and click. Why do you have to keep on clicking? Because every time you click, it brings up a new ad and they get paid again and again and again and again. And guess where they get their information from? Yahoo Answers. They just take people's answers and they take people's videos and they chop up the answer into single sentences, turn them into a 15 page post, make 15 click, clicks, clicky baity kind of things and they make a lot of money out of that. The reason it's, it's still there is because they make a lot, a lot of money out of that. Please don't do that, but please do make videos. Please do make videos. Videos are important to me for many reasons because they engage people. When somebody comes to see me, they have seen me before I've even met them. It's almost like they know me. And it's, it's kind of weird, but it works really, really well. Because when somebody walks into the room, there are no surprises. Unless it's one of my old videos. In my old fat videos, people look at me kind of weird going, mm, you got cancer or something? <laughs> no, 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 I'm fine. I'm just, I'm just living the lifestyle now. Um, videos introduce people. So every doctor in your practice should have a, hi, my name is Judy Smith and my particular interest is polycystic ovarian disease. I look after lots of ladies who really struggle with this and my job is to determine the best treatment outcome for you. If you'd like to talk about polycystic ovarian disease, please book in to see me. Probably best to book in for half an hour first so I can get to really know you. That's every doctor should have their own introduction video on your website, right? Videos educate people. This year the flu vaccine has come out. This year is a quadvalent, which means that there are four strains of the flu vaccine that you are going to be protected against. Some people are worried about the flu vaccine because they think that the US government is putting absolute DNA in there that take over the world. Well, I'll let you know that that's not actually true. What it is is just broken up bits of virus and it can't even give you the flu. It's just a design to bring up your immunity. It's that educate people just give them the truth break all of those lies down and just hit them head on video reduces litigation absolutely positively if somebody is going to sue you sue a doctor they make that decision in the first seven seconds as they're walking down the hallway into that room they've already made up their mind if it all goes pear-shaped they're going to sue that doctor I would rather that be a video because then if they hate my guts they ain't coming. The only people that come to see me are my fans. If they don't like me they do not book in to see me. They look at the video and go, he's a posing asshole. I'm not going to go see him. Yes! That's one less person I have to worry about. <laughs> but seriously, it reduces litigation. If you are doing, if you choose to take on the strategy that I've recommended about making a, a video about Implanon, you can reduce your litigation. Because if somebody comes in and sues you with the baby in their arm after the, after the, the insertion of the Implanon, you can show, here's the video that said that I told her not to go and do an aerobics class afterwards and it's not my fault the Implanon was down on the floor. Um, but seriously, you should document everything and video is the best way to do it. And I look after people on a particular medicine called PrEP or pre-exposure prophylaxis. It helps reduce people from being infected by HIV by 99% when it's taken every day. What's the chances I've got a video that says take the damn tablet every day? It's there, it's documented, my ass is covered. Video also has huge SEO benefits as well. So when I started Melbourne Rapid HIV Test, oh, which one's this, sorry? Oh, sorry, Gay Men's Health, one of my websites. Um, when I launch any, fine, okay, cool. When I launch any website, it always contains video. One, to introduce me, two, to reduce litigation, three, so people who hate me don't come. 
and four, because Google will find me faster if I have videos. Video, video, video. And I'll just show you the next slide. See all of those links? They just happen to be linking to my websites. And the way that Google decides whether your website is worthy of ranking is if people of value link to your website. Google happens to own YouTube, so they think that their website's pretty top-notch. Oh look, YouTube's linking to my website, therefore it's probably trustable. So this is how you get ranked up really, really high. So even if you find that your videos are dull, just make them, put links in, and you'll be golden. So here's how to do it. Make your video on your phone. Choose a topic, make your video on your phone. Put the video up onto YouTube. All right. Then make a description that says what the video is about. Put links to that in that description back to your website. Okay? Or wherever you want Google to love, you put links back to there. Then I go to a wonderful place called rev.com. Rev.com is a transcription service and they charge $1 a minute for transcription and I will upload the video to them and they will transcribe it. So I, a five minute yabber on for me is usually around about 800 words. So I take those 800 words and I put them on my blog with the video and that is the blog post. That's how easy it is. And then I hit publish. And then I do one more thing. Actually, I don't do one more thing. That's it, that's all I have to do. There's an automated, because everything I do is automated as well. The next thing you should do is you should tweet your post, you should pin your post on Pinterest, you should Facebook your post. You should find a question that needs to be answered with your video on Cura and put your video there with a link back to your post. You should scoop your post. So scoopit.com is a very trusted news website and you can put your own news up on there. You get to decide what's newsworthy. Um, Reddit is another place where people people hang out. If you're going to hang out on Reddit though, you'd better have asbestos pants on because people will burn you alive. If they think you're fibbing, they will burn you alive. Um, now that sounds painful and I can hear people fiddling in their seats going, oh I don't want to do that, that's going to take hours. There's a wonderful website called If This Then That. Right? This particular website automates everything for me. So my website sends a signal to if this then that and boop, each of my posts gets sent to 30 other websites automatically. I don't have to do anything and that creates 30 links back to my post which Google then goes, holy crap, 30 people just linked back to his post. We'd better index that because it sounds interesting. Not many posts get linked. The average blog post, nobody reads. Literally nobody reads. Well, except for the person who wrote it. They probably read it. But, um, but if you get a link, that means it was interesting and Google gets excited. And that's how I get 30 links back on every single post. Every link I get back is a vote for my site, which brings it higher up, which makes it easier for people to find me. That's what I do. It's a little bit tricky, but once you get the process going, and if you don't want to do this setup, you can pay somebody five bucks to do it for you. You go to fiverr.com and you just pay someone to do it. I need somebody to set up a social media campaign. Could you please do it for me? Sure. Somebody in somewhere else is done. I'll do it for you for five bucks and 48, later, 48 hours later, you get it back and it's all set up for you. Really, really easy if you know what to do. Um, but it's about getting the external links. And this is where Facebook, Twitter, and all of that stuff is really, really important. And this is why when you're making videos, you have to make them interesting entertaining and useful because people won't share it if it's crap but if it's useful or if it could save a life people will share it until the cows come home absolutely um, so that's the social media makeover that I that I do that makes me a good well it makes me all of my money to be honest that's how I get all my patients and that's what you can do uh, if you are so desired
But if you don't want to, that's fine. You know, do what you like. No one's got a gun. A um, couple of very quick important things. Get your practice listed on Google Maps. That's important. People need to know how to find you. So when they type in GP Clifton Hill, it's really important that they need to find you. If your place has multiple rooms or multiple floors, why don't you list each doctor in each room? Give each doctor a different address. So, you know, box one, 246 Burke Street. Box two, 246 Burke Street. Everybody gets listed. That way you'll get multiple listings on Google Maps. You need separate phone numbers for that. You can buy a phone number from Skype for seven bucks a month. Um, get to know your local citations as well. This is where people bitch about your, your particular practices. If you think people don't do it, they do. Um, be aware of medical, medical board guidelines. They don't encourage review sites at the moment. That's for doctors. As for practices, if you've had a good service, would you be so kind as to let other people know about it? Here are some websites that you could perhaps let people know about. Yelp, um, TripAdvisor, I think that's for restaurants mainly, but I think medical centres go into TripAdvisor as well. Also Google Trusted Sites. Um, read your citations. Start Googling the name of your practice because people will bitch and moan. Um, this had, I did a talk a couple of months ago and um, I came up about a practice in the CBD where so, somebody got a, an injection and their little treasure got cried when the needle went in the arm and it was all horrible. Um, but she published it on online and I was very kind. I let this medical centre know that they were being bitched about because they weren't even aware of it. You should know. You should be Googling your own name. Absolutely. Um, any questions? I've covered a lot of ground and I apologise for... Blah, 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 blah. Any... Yes? One question. The figures that you throw in a dollar perspective Um, it depends. It depends on what the person does. Um, there are social media companies here in Melbourne that will charge you somewhere from anywhere from $200 a month all the way up to $25,000 a month, depending on what you want, depending on how big your company is and depending on how big your problems are. The bigger your problems, the more expensive they will be to fix. But if you learn how to do this stuff, it's very economical. It's very economical. And there are people who do that, that automated setup. There are people who do that and charge people a monthly fee when ultimately all they ever do is do it once. And then they charge people every month to maintain it, maintain it, which might mean that they just quickly go in and make sure it's still working. But that's, that's it. But people will stay, still pay monthly fees because you've all been so awesome and amazing. Thank you. And you all sat, um, which is great. Um, glink.me forward slash videos. This is a video that I suspect is worth a lot of money because it, it goes through the exact processes that I do to set up all of my websites. Feel, feel free to go through, enjoy that video. Um, if you like me, search my name. I'm happy to chat to anybody. So, yeah. Talk to you about if they need an additional doctor at their practice. Oh, yeah. If anybody's looking for it. <laughs> I'm only working three days a week at the moment, people. Um, <laughs> Just saying, but um, yeah. So yeah, I hope that was I hope that was helpful, and I hoped it sparked your interest. If nothing else, if you grow and create a video, I will be a very happy camper. Thank you very much. Thank you.